world give us their judgment about future developments that could come from lone wolf terrorists. And among the input that we got from us, we had a lot of time picking people whose judgments we would honor and and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, give credibility to. And this group told us that the lone wolf situation gets worse before it gets better. These are single individuals that are bent on doing damage in some way or uh, in uh, pursuing their souls in some way that benefits themselves or groups they belong to. Uh, the lone wolf phenomenon is one of the cases where history does not give us a complete or even a uh, an appropriate picture of things that things do get worse before they get better because the amount of power that these people control grows over time. We asked the question about uh, who these people were, how they became radicalized, uh, and what perspectives they might have for the future. So, Ryan, while I agree with you that it's an interesting and important beginning is to look at history. A much different picture emerges when you turn it around and say, what can happen in the future that was not seen in history? And here, you would get a different picture of what can evolve. Because the, the power of the tools, the objectives, the mergers, the overlapping uh, interests of the actors changes over time. And there is no database to go to to find out what that picture is. This comes from the minds of people, which is in fact the way the study I mentioned uh, was structured. So the f view we formed of cyberspace from this work is that cyberspace is a space that has three dimensions, as in fact all space is three or more. And the dimensions of cyberspace are the actors from lone wolves that I mentioned a moment ago, who nation states, uh, including organized crime, uh, including uh, uh, terrorist organizations, uh, in intelligence organizations, maybe rogue states as well. And a second dimension is the objectives of the people who constitute these actors. What are they after? Well, at the hacker end, they're after self-aggrandizement identification of their power to, to cause chaos. And at the other end, uh, the objective is to influence the course of nations. And the third dimension is, is the weaponry which is used by these actors, ranging from viruses and uh, worms uh, through um, uh, espionage, sabotage, uh, and uh, detection of malintent. Yes, the study included even that. How can we use the internet to identify people who might want to do harm to us? I'll have more to say about that in a minute. And the interesting thing is that there are synergies between these groups that look disparate at first and yet come together in terms of their objectives. Uh, for example, blackmail and money laundering. One objective of distorting the internet in order to, to achieve that end. That's an objective shared by organized crime and terrorist organizations. They, they coincide here. And we find many of that kind of overlap. So that our conclusion was that there is a creep toward violence in the internet, in cyberspace. In fact, if you look at the number of websites that are devoted to terrorist activities, in 2003 there, there were approximately 2,600. In 2009, 15,000. And if one had to guess about 2015, the number is probably 25,000. In a conversation before this meeting with the governor, I asked, why isn't that we can use the, the prowess of the United States advertising uh, and marketing capability to influence those sites? Where is there a site that says, if you join those, those guys, you're a jerk. Uh, you, are, you are following some uh, uh, approach that... Uh, uh, is, is, is rejectable, that is, uh, that is despicable. Uh, why can't we put that across? We've, we've, used, we've used advertising in some way. If you see it, say something. If it doesn't look right, report it. Uh, and uh, that's, that's got the same kind of dimension as smoking is bad for you. 
but that's only beginning. It's possible for us to influence through the techniques that uh, we find uh, ourselves expert at. Um, there's creep, this creep toward violence that I mentioned is evidenced in a number of different ways. There's about three and a half million PCs, uh, 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 personal computers, uh, that are now um, influenced uh, by uh, uh, virus infections of one sort or another. We guess there were 100 million records stolen last year from government and corporations. Uh, and uh, some of these have already been mentioned, Sony being persuaded through cyberspace to delay or not introduce their movie, their movie called uh, The Interview, uh, and cyber attacks on large banks. Uh, there's a continuing call for violence from Al-Qaeda, for example, to influence individuals to join the ranks of the lone wolf. Just last week, Al-Zawari called on Muslims, Muslim men, most, most lone wolves are men, uh, to follow the examples of the Boston bombers uh, and uh, the, um, this call to action uh, was carried in most, uh, on most uh, uh, sites. Use your programming talent to attack. And he meant attack in the interest of the, of the uh, extremists. Lone wolf attacks from our study were seen by this group to have the potential to escalate uh, beyond the Twin Towers in terms of killing potential and injury. We asked the question in this study, for example, when do you think a single lone wolf attack will kill 10,000 people? And while there was disagreement, the answer was within several decades. 2050. Where North America? Why religion? Who's the target population? What are the weapons, biotech, and information? With a lot of undecided answers, a lot of areas where there was no clear-cut consensus. And that, in fact, is different than most studies of this sort that we run, where consensus can be achieved. Here, there was no consensus. Should scientific papers that contain information that can be used by lone wolves or terrorists in general be published openly, as science calls for? Half said yes, half said no. Uh, will soft approaches work? Uh, are we willing to compromise privacy in order to improve safety, security, and how much compromises are warranted? As we looked at the panoply of future technologies and asked about their potential for uh, damage in cyberspace, the list is long. Robots, synthetic biology, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, what a soft target that is on the Internet, the rise of massive databases. I'll finish in a couple of minutes. Um, hacking into automated systems like self driving automobiles, like uh, the control system of, the air, of an aircraft, uh, blackmail through honeypots. The list was very long. But there were upbeat developments as well that were forecasted. Uh, detection of malintent, as I mentioned a moment ago, through the analysis and synthesis of databases that contained information about individuals. Uh, the psychological theory is that lone wolves and terrorists in general have a certain profile which is recognizable. All of the information in this, in this profile is contained in databases somewhere, most likely, or if not yet will be, so that there's ch a chance for an algorithm that can combine the information from these databases and assess the threat level of an individual. Ass assess malintent ahead of time. This is like the Minority Report short story and the movies called Minority Report. Find the crime before it occurs. Interdict yourself. Now we find that of half of, half of the um, crimes that are reported, some half have occurred. I mean, half there has been damage. Uh, but for the other half, they have been interdicted successfully by standard police methods. 
uh, including profiling, including um, um, uh, entrapment, what some people would call entrapment, at least creating creating a, a synthetic false friends that ostensibly are going to help obtain weaponry. So in the end, we're left with questions that the, that the ethics that we're seeking at this meeting has to address. Should we publish everything that is that may or may not be in our interest? Um, should it, what, how far should we go in this trade-off between liberties uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, threat reduction? Uh, as the possibility of large-scale destruction becomes evident, as we think it may well, 100,000 people eventually in a single episode, uh, then the willingness to trade off grows. What about the stigma of false positives? Suppose this synthesis of databases that I talked about leads to the identification of people who are, at, who are risky or perceived as risky. Uh, do we label them as uh, potential terrorists? And what do we do about that? And, and if we're wrong, Think about how we have affected those people. So in the end, we do need a code of net ethics to which individuals and nations can ascribe it. Who will write it? Who will sign it? What's on it? Don't lie, Governor. Consider uh, positions, uh, consider positions were swapped. Would we want that to happen to us? And does it improve things? All questions for that ethics statement yet to be written. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.